So children, yes, good morning. Uh, this Evans Prize in O Level, written by Colin Dexter. So what kind of write-up is it? It's a detective story, basically. Detective stories with the, it's a detective story with a lot of incidents of red hearings. Where, you know, uh, the writer will leave certain, uh, you know, uh, things, he would be talking about certain issues or incidents or uh, events, which would make, which would make the readers get distracted from the right, uh, uh, you know, solution. So basically, it's about how Evans, the criminal, is able to escape from the prison. So how he will be, as how will he escape? That is what we have to find out through the story. So the whole of all of the solutions will be there by the end of the story. But in between, the writer will keep on dropping so many hints in between that uh, if we would be a little bit of uh, you know vigilant readers. If we'll take care of the details from the point of view of a detective, then even we will also be able to find out like how was Evans able to escape from the jail. Okay. And why is Evans escape a big issue? There are two reasons. Number one, uh, the jail authorities have made a uh, made a very, very, you know, um, strong system against which it is almost impossible for any person to escape from the prison without being noticed. So the system is such, the things are, are all on high alert that it is almost impossible for anyone to leave the place or come in the jail uh, without the authorities' knowledge. Even then, Evans will not only escape, he will escape uh, in such manner that uh, as readers, you'll be shocked to know, like he will escape in front with the help of the authorities only. So let's see how he does it. So as a detective, we have to remain very vigilant through the story so that we are all able to make out like how he does it. It's a very interesting chapter. We yesterday read out its first part. And what we read out, let's see. <clears throat> So we discussed yesterday the dr dramatis personae of this play. First of all, we'll have the secretary of the examination board. It will be this person who will be organizing, who will be con uh, conducting the examination in the jail for events. We won't meet this person face to face, but he will be there in the university itself. We will only listen to him through the phone call. Then there is the governor of HM prison, Oxford. This is the if we, if there is another second character, most important after Evans, it is the governor of the HM prison, Oxford. The governor who thinks himself to be uh, very intelligent, but he will be outwitted by Evans. Then the third, the hero of our story, James Evans, a prisoner. It is this person who will, you know, uh, uh, turns the tables upon the authorities only. Then there is Mr. Jackson a prison officer, Mr. Stephens, another prison officer. And then there is the Reverend S. McLeary. He will be an invigilator for the examination. Then Mr. Carter, detective superintendent, and Mr. Bell, the detective chief inspector, right? So the all precautions have been taken to see to it that the O-level German examination arranged in the prison for exams does not provide him any chance of escape. So uh, the situation is that uh, Evans has to appear for O-level German examination, for which he had been uh, given coaching for six months in the jail by the jail authorities. A tutor had been coming to teach him German for six long months every day. And afterwards, there is an exam for him of the German O-level. And all precautions have been taken so that this person, Evans, doesn't escape from the jail. But even then he escapes. That is what we have to find out how. So what kind of person was advanced? We'll be reading it out. And what were the precautions taken for the smooth conduct of the examination? 
So you have to, you know, fo focus upon like what precautions were taken for the smooth conduct of the examination. So now the play is going to start with the conversation of uh, uh, the governor and the secretary of the examination. Okay, secretary of the examination will agree to the governor's request, like how uh, that the examination is to be conducted for just one person, that is James Roderick Evans. The secretary wants to know like what kind of uh, person is James Roderick Evans, and he is told that so here it is a very, very important dialogue. No, there is no record of violence. So there is no record of violence against Evans. Quite a pleasant sort of chap, they tell me. So bit of a card, really, one of stars at the Christmas concert. Imitations, you know, the sort of thing, Mike Yarwood stuff. No, he's just a congenital kleptomaniac. That's all. So overall, he's a very pleasant sort of person. No record of violence against him. He was, he used to be a star at the concerts, uh, mainly, I guess he used to do imitations and um, only one problem about him was that he, uh, he is a kleptomaniac. He has a tendency to steal things, even, uh, you know, that is only the, uh, you know, problem with him. So this is a psychological disorder, children. So when somebody steals things without, when, without the requirement also, okay, when you don't want something, Okay, even then when somebody steals something, it's the tendency, it's a mental disorder, which is called as kleptomania. So he suffered from this. So the governor was tempted to add something else, but he thought better of it. He would look after that particular side of things himself. So the uh, governor wanted to speak a few more things about this man, but he chose to be quiet. And he promised the secretary of the examination that he would take care of the other things about events on his own. So from this much dialogue, you know, uh, children, you might have been able to make out that this governor has nothing, uh, nothing negative about events to say. So don't you think like the governor, the authority is all full of praises for him? Don't you think that the, that the authorities have developed a soft corner for the criminal like Evans? People call him Evans the break. Okay, he is a jailbird. He escaped thrice from jail, thereby hoodwinking the authorities. Even then, the jail authorities have a soft corner for him. Is it wrong? Of course, you will say no, it's not wrong. Even the criminals are human beings because it is said that we must hate the crime, not the criminal. Keeping that in mind, then this governor's attitude is very right. He is able to appreciate the uh, criminal, that is, he is able to appreciate Ivan's qualities. But the most important thing is, like here when he is describing this man to the uh, secretary of the examination, then this uh, governor should have also highlighted how smart this Evans is. He should have also talked about like how, how smart and uh, how will, how can Evans try to outwit the authorities. That also he should have known, that also he should have pointed out, but that is lacking. So in the very beginning, because children, we are to find out like how was uh, how was Evans able to escape from the jail? Despite such big, uh, you know, uh, high alert upon him, even then he was able to escape, how come that? So the very first thing, the very first negative thing about the authorities we have been able to find from here is that authorities develop soft corner for these kinds of criminals. And the point is developing a soft corner for these people is not wrong, but ignoring or uh, uh, not being aware of the, uh, about their strength, that is wrong, right? So presumably said the secretary, you can arrange a room where, so the secretary was expecting that person to arrange a room where no problem, he is, he is in the cell on his own. If you have no objections, he can sit in the exam in the, there. That's fine. 
and we could easily get one of the parsons from saint mary max to invigilate if that's so who is a speaker if uh, and we could easily get one of the parsons from saint mary max to invigilate so the governor is suggesting that uh, they would be inviting the parson from saint mary max to invigilate okay fine yes they seem to have a lot of parsons there don't they the two men chuckled and good naturedly and the secretary had a final thought at least there is one thing you shouldn't have much trouble keeping him in communicado should you so finally the secretary agreed that yes they will be uh, able to call one person that is the priest or the father from the church called saint mary mag and that person will be the invigilator done one more thing the secretary told the governor that uh, this events must be kept in communicado that is he must not be uh, allowed to have any contact with any person outside so uh, his room should be properly bugged up so he in communicado means he should not be able to contact anyone and no one else should also be able to contact him so no outsider would should be able to talk to him and he also should not be able to talk to anyone until the exam is over so first precaution so what precautions have been taken to safeguard the examination to make out that the examination will be conducted smoothly the first point is that the that this events is going to be kept in communicado is that clear the governor chuckled politely and once more reiterated his thanks and slowly cradled the phone events so this governor is you know obsessed with events point is that the governor you know uh, he ha it has become a matter of prestige for governor that he would not let events escape it has become a matter of prestige for governor now so day in and day out he thinks about events and he makes sure that events doesn't run away events the break as the prison officers called him thrice he had escaped from prison so children here in this paragraph we will come to know who events is we had a question what uh, what kind of person ivan was what kind of person he is and what precautions have been taken to keep the examination smooth so here also we read out what kind of person is he quite a pleasant sort of person no no record of violence only congenital kleptomaniac three points we read here then now we are going to read about him in details over here ivans the break as a prison officers called him thrice he had escaped from prison and but for the recent wave of unrest in the maximum security establishments up north he won't now be gracing the governor's premises in oxford and the governor was going to make absolutely certain that he won't be disgracing them so already he had been able to escape three times and now he would not be he would he will dare not do the same thing in oxford prison where the governor himself is taken care of his case not that events was a real burden just a persistent nagging presence just a persistent nagging presence he would be all right in oxford though the governor there was the governor would see to it would see to it personally and besides there was not there was just a possibility that events was genuinely interested in o level german examination now the point is uh, was there a possibility that events was trying to escape from jail was there a possibility that events was planning an escape and uh, keeping that in mind then the governor even had an idea that that uh, maybe uh, events planning to appear in paper in o level german examination was his attempt to escape see this the governor knew this that maybe uh, that ivan was planning to appear for paper maybe it was his idea of getting escaped from the jail just a slight possibility so there was just a slight possibility that events might be planning to escape through the paper just a very slight possibility right so the point is that the governor the authorities 
usually they also know like what the criminals can do at 8:30 pm on monday 7 june ivan's german teacher shook him by the hand in the heavily guarded recreational block just across from d wing so children uh, see this um, from this these lines you will even come to know about the location of the of the room where ivans is imprisoned so at 8:30 pm in the evening at 7 on 7th june his german teacher came in his room and say, see uh, guten gluck herr ivans pardon i said good luck good luck for tomorrow oh thanks i i mean uh, uh, dank uh, con so the german teacher wished him good luck in germans and this person you know ivans was not able to understand even the meaning of good luck in german he said pardon means what do you mean by so the german teacher explained that he wished him good luck oh thanks so he thanked for this but what do we come to know from here do we get any clue children here you haven't a cat in hell's chance of getting through uh, of course but so what does the teacher say you haven't a cat in hell's chance what do you mean by this you don't have any chance of passing the paper but but i may surprise everybody said ivans at 8:30 the following morning so the paper would be conducted on 8 june then it means if on 7th june the teacher is wishing him good luck for the next day then uh yes charanjot is telling that he is not perfect in german so yes charanjot you are very right very good answer so point is that if he is not only good he is he doesn't know at all anything in german when you start learning a language i guess uh when we start learning any language of any, any foreign language uh, then the very first things we are taught uh, is like a wishing good morning good afternoon all the best hello how are you so the very first you know the these kinds of you know greetings we learn in the very first instance later on only we learn the alphabets or the sounds or the pronunciations and all so he could not even make out to like what it meant by guten glück he didn't even know this so the meaning is that he did not know german at all does it give any hint do we get any hint out of it yes do we get any hint out of this fact like he did not understand german at all and even the teacher said this that there you haven't a cat in hell's chance like there is no chance that you will pass yes what see what clue are we getting here uh yes very good charanjot that his plan is to escape yes very good the only thing the, that this person this uh, what we call him that the person is this ivans is planning to appear in german o level paper is not to learn german not to pass in german but there might have been his plan to escape from the jail and the authorities though they had a little bit of idea because this is what we read out just now but even then the authorities will they take it very seriously we'll see to it uh he wasn't studying german shita ji yes he was he had been getting coaching for german for the last 6 months okay from october to june he was given personal coaching in this german by the jail authorities okay each day his tutor would come and teach him german each day for 6 months and this is the last day of uh, you know 6 months when the coaching was over and next day was a paper and he did not know the abc of german and the and the answer is clear that he the purpose of him he was getting the coaching but learning german wasn't his motive yes very right shitaj so learning german was not his motive his motive was to plan to escape okay so any other clue from this much any other clue from this much do you think this german teacher is uh, is with the jail authorities or is he the friend of uh, ivans only hmm 
any clue yes as a detective we'll have to make it out because at least we know this much that evans is able to escape this much at least we know in the story how will evans escape this teacher who had been coming to him from outside for 6 months evans was in the jail he could not do anything he could not talk to any anyone if he was able to escape later on then it means that somebody was helping him out so who might have it been it might have been this very person the one who might, who had been coming to him daily so this outsider was doing all arrangements for him outside okay so let's see let me not explain all the things to you people okay so he says uh, this ivan says i may surprise everybody at 8:30 the following morning ivan had a visitor two visitors in fact he tucked in he tucked his grubby spring vest into his equally grubby trousers and stood up from his bunk smiling cheerfully morning mr jackson this is indeed an honor so that next morning at 8:30 two visitors came to him and those two visitors were not outsiders one is mr jackson and the other will be mr stephens and both are the uh are the are the you can say uh, guards in the prison only so here in the very beginning we read out so see this uh, mr jackson a prison officer and mr stephens another prison officer so these two visitors will come to him uh to make him ready for examination right so now you will see how friendly evans is with these two people and even how friendly are these two officers with evans basically evans is a very cheerful person governor told us in the very beginning he is a very cheerful and pleasant sort of person he was the one who was uh, who was very good in imitation he used to be a star at the concerts so this kind of person who is good in imitation the one who is a pleasant person cheerful person that person becomes friendly with everybody but but be, being friendly with others is also uh, also in a makes that person um, also you know enables that person to get the things in his or her favor you will see this now so see his a tone morning mr jackson this is indeed an honor jackson was a senior prison officer on d wing and he and evans had already become warm enemies very important we have a heard like warm friends okay we are usually warm friends okay whenever we have very good relation with somebody that we say like we have got warm relations so here they had become warm enemies what do you mean by warm enemies and the enemies those who knew each other very well at jackson side stood uh, officer stephens a burly surly looking man burly surly means muscular so on jackson side uh, uh, stephens was there who was a very muscular man only recently recruited to the profession jackson nodded curtly so he had been wished morning mr jackson now he nodded curtly and how's our little einstein this morning then so who is little einstein here evans evans is called as little einstein also so jackson addressed him like how is our little einstein today so who is einstein somebody who was a famous scientist and this very evans the prisoner is also given the title like little einstein wasn't he a mathematician mr jackson who says this evans evans says like wasn't he a mathematician i think he was a jew mr jackson evans face was unshaven and he wore a filthy looking red and white bobble hat upon his head my dear children these two officers stephens and uh, and jackson they had come to make this person ready for examination so at this time you know this evans his face was unshaven and moreover he was wearing a very dirty hat dirty red and white hat upon his head you have to notice each and everything very carefully uh because you people have to make out like where and where and what went wrong that helped evans escape 
so when they enter they found his uh, you know he found him unshaven and secondly they find that he was wearing a dirty red and white hat on his head give me a chance mr jackson i was just going to shave when you burst in so he uh, which reminds me jackson turned his eyes on stephens make sure you take his razor out of the out of the cell when he's finished scrapping that ugly mug of his clear one of these days he'll do us all a favor and cut his bloody throat so mr uh, jackson uh, jackson when he uh, when evans tells him that he will clean his uh, shave and all then jackson tells stephens that uh, remember to take the razor from him when he has done his shaving otherwise he can uh, you know he can uh, do do us all a favor and cut his bloody throat like he can su commit suicide with the same uh, razor it's it was only fun the point is that uh, jackson is very you know uh, careful about taking away razor from that boy person evans so that during examination he cannot cannot use it for uh, escaping from the prison and all so for a few seconds evans looks looked thoughtfully at the man standing ramrod straight in front of him a string of second world war medals proudly paraded over his left breast pocket mr jackson was it you who took my nail scissors away evans had always worried about his hands okay now children this evans you know he looked at the he looked at uh, mr jackson who had so many you know medals uh, adorning his chest so really a very brave man so evans asked him like sir did you take my nail uh, nail scissors and evans was known for uh, the one who always was very careful about his hands and nails and your nail file too so jackson told him that yes i took your nail scissors as well as nail filer also look for a moment evans eyes smoldered dangerously look for a moment evans eyes smoldered dangerously but jackson was ready for him look orders of the governor evans he leaned forward and leered his voice dropping to a harsh contemptuous whisper uh, you want to complain so when the uh, evans uh, asked uh, confirmed whether his nail filer or scissors have been taken then uh, evans was becoming a little you can say aggressive he became annoyed but he was told that these are the orders of the governor that uh, 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 that nothing should be left with you and then they asked him like do you want to complain ivan shrugged his shoulders lightly the crisis was over what crisis was over what was a crisis that was over uh, and your nail file too look for a moment ivan's eyes smoldered dangerously so then when this evans had become a little aggressive at the fact that his nail filer had been taken away from him then when he was told that uh, these were the orders from the uh, uh, governor and moreover if he wanted to complain then he can then by this time evans got cool so the crisis was over you've got half an hour to smarten yourself up evans and the, and take that bloody hat off so he was told that he has to get ready within half an hour and uh, moreover he was told to remove that bloody that dirty hat me at who oh, evans put his right hand lovingly on top of his filthy woolen and and smiled sadly do you know mr jackson it's only thing that's ever brought me any sort of luck in life kind of lucky charm if you know what i mean and today i thought well with me exam and all that so he was asked to remove the dirty hat and what did this what did this evans tell the officers he told them that uh, that ugly hat was his only lucky charm in life so he said like today is an exam so let me have this hat it will work like a lucky charm okay buried somewhere in jackson was a tiny core of compassion 
and Evans knew it. Very important. So Evans knew this, that Jackson appeared to be very burly and surly, very strong, very brave, but somewhere his heart was full of compassion. So he requested him that he should be allowed to go on with his uh, uh, dirty hat. He knew that he would be granted the permission. Got it? So Evans knew that Jackson is basically very compassionate. So children, any, any another clue we have got about how Evans will be able to escape from jail? The another clue is that Evans knows that these people are emotional fools. And he will try to fool them, fool them every now and then. So when this, this Jackson and Stephenson will be very careful about taking away all the dangerous items from him, they will allow him to go on with his dirty hat on his head. Okay, so right now uh, you people might not be able to make out like what will this dirty hat do? How will it serve the purpose of events? But you will be surprised at the at the bigger plan events had to escape from the jail. Okay, so till now uh, this much for today. Tomorrow we'll continue from page number 74. Okay, thank you. Charanjot says that there might be something in hat. That we'll see, Charanjot. That you don't read. The, uh, don't. Uh, uh, yeah, you can read the whole story, but don't read uh, uh, summaries. Otherwise, your whole uh, interest will be lost. Okay.